welcome to Qi Talk. My name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. I used to be an architect many years ago uh, and uh, shifted my career and started to teach energy healing and uh, Qigong, which is based in traditional Chinese medicine. Qigong is, is energy practice. And we always talk about energy. Yeah, do I have energy? The energy fall in the middle of the day. Maybe at the end of the day, I don't have a lot of energy. We always use this term energy and, and, um, and how to get energy. And everybody's seeking energy. And so this is, a, this is kind of like a big topic. And I wanted to divide it into a few talks, at least five talks. And always look at the at this uh, from a different perspective in Chinese medicine. And there's, there's a lot of uh, knowledge, theoretic knowledge, but also, uh, also experience knowledge, like how, how to do it, how to get more energy, how to be in a good energy state uh, throughout the day and throughout your life and how to maintain um, a good health and happiness and long life. Yeah, this is something that is very dear to the Taoists yeah, and uh, something is very, uh, a, a, an expression that is very common in, in Chinese culture is that everybody wish each other happiness, health, and long life. Yeah, and so we, we're going to talk about this today, about one aspect of energy, and we're going to shift the focus every week to another, another aspect of, of, of how to be in a, in a kind of a balanced state. And uh, why is it so important? Because, because this is our happiness, this is our health, and this is what brings us into, into also long life. But uh, more, than, more than so that I experienced on my own on, with, with working with clients that a lot of time just to put people in the right energy, in the right energy balance throughout the day, they heal. They heal. Even something that was chronic and going up for a long time believe it or not and it's like wow i'm doing this and this and i'm healing and i'm how come this pain disappear how come this is uh you know and we all think about qigong and it's some miracle <laughs> yeah but really what we want to do is live in a state of internal balance energy balance and uh and so these talks are going to be devoted into into this topic so uh, let me just, uh, let's do a, a kind of like an opening ceremony like we always do uh, before we start. Uh, but before that, I'll just say for people that don't know me, my name is Ellie Cohen. I'm an energy uh, healing coach and medical Qigong practitioners. And I've been teaching over 10 years and work with people one-on-one -on -one that suffer from chronic health condition, I heal. And the stories are amazing and you can do it too. And this is going to be transcribed into the podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. Awaking that little, little guy inside of you that knows how to heal itself. We say that the heart knows. The heart can go as far as the meaning of life. The heart knows. This little organ here does not have only like a, a physical function. It's also, uh, there's energetic function. And your organ as consciousness inside of you, they know why you're here. Yeah, uh, maybe on the conscious level, we're not, we don't know. We feel lost sometimes. We feel frustrated. But the energy inside of you, um, the organs inside of you, they know. And if we listen, we, we can heal ourselves. So, uh, so um, this is just to kind of inspire you, but really... The idea of these talks is to give really uh, tools and resources of how to do it. All right, so let's start. <laughs> let's start by uh, closing our eyes and relaxing our body, coming into the body. So let's close our eyes and just feel where you are in your body. Is there areas that feel pain or tension? Areas that feel tightness? Areas that feel good. How's the temperature in the room? Is it cold? Is it hot? Are you sweating? Are you just physical sensation? So when we say come into the body, we mean just notice areas that feel maybe heavy, areas that feel light. 
and look at it as energy. So you look at it in terms of like, oh, that feels like heavy, that feels light, that feels pressure, that feels tightness, that feels airy, that feels hot, that feels cold, that feels sweaty. Uh, yeah, notice the clothes on your skin. Let's take just a minute here to listen to the body. To where are you now without changing anything? And as you scan through the body, you might be noticing that things are shifting. That maybe you noticed in the beginning something, and now you notice something else, and this something else in the body is transforming into something else. And all of a sudden, the tightness here transforming to the tightness there. But if you start to listen truthfully, with curiosity, things would start to shift and move and flow. And that's a good thing. And notice the breath. Where does the breath go? How deep it is? You don't shift it or move it. You just notice where things are as they are. And as you look and then open your attention to the entire form and shape of your body, and greet it, say hi. And accept it the way it is and send it love. Love the, the area, even the area that feels tight. Continuously. And as before we open our eyes, we just want to acknowledge anything on the outside before we open our eyes. So either the noise, any sounds from the outside, any smells, any temperature difference. And allow yourself to open your eyes. Nice. That's just a little meditation to relax ourselves, <laughs> to come into the body. And so, uh, so the first thing about energy and how do we go about, about living in, a, in, in an, energy, an energy state is uh, a topic that I wanted to, to share today is, yeah, I was kind of contemplating between two topics, but I wanted to kind of bring a topic that we started the last conversation with. Uh, there was a question that somebody asked here about the the condition or the relationship between heart and kidney and and how the uh, how the kidney influenced the heart and we went into an explanation about how to live in the state of balance between the water element in your uh, and that connects to the kidney and the fire element which is the heart and so really this is the first i would say the first step into or one of the steps i guess but but pretty early on to to manage your energy 
is to uh, to understand where you are like how do you sleep <laughs> that's a very important and a lot of people don't sleep very well and and are you stressed a lot are you busy are you worried like where is your where is your energy where is your energy depletion is and uh through understanding where we are we know what we we need and usually what it is i wanted to talk today about the 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 difference between yin and yang really and i think we talked about it really early on many many months maybe last year and uh you can be yang or you can be yin and that connects also to heart and kidney and to have balance is where 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 you have a lot of energy where you have when you go between yin and yang so when the yin and yang are together they're flowing together yeah then then it's you are in a state of energy and what happened when your energy uh drops is that you are something is out of sync so whenever that happens you know that something is not you're either too much yin or either too much yang and usually it's too much yang because people are very stressed all the time and a go 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 and they don't take time to relax and that's again we talked about it at the relationship between the kidney and the and the heart the fire especially now in summer it's very important to to talk about this and so so the fire you can again i i'll just mention it again your body is a is a pot of of a pot that puts on the stove and there's water in the pot and there's a cooking that pot is being cooked with the fire so the heart is the fire now sometimes there are people and sometimes we are so much stress and that relates to like a lot of fire so if you have a lot of fire and you have water in your pot there's going to be a lot of evaporation right and if the if the fire is in a low flame it's going to be simmering very slowly that's a really good state Yeah so what what so stress can be related to a lot of fire turning on the fire also being uh being very excited like going to a party it doesn't have to be like work very hard yeah when we work very hard like workaholics they come back home and they say i'm burnt out burnt out we say it in our language too much fire we are burnt yeah and also party like party very hard or very excited you have family visiting from out of town you're so excited excited so that can be also lead to burnout so too much excitement on the heart or too much stress is too much fire so you cooking this the so what what happens when you cook the water on a very high flame if you don't have more water is all the water going to evaporate and what happens after all the water evaporate from the pot and you keep cooking then the pot become red hot and that is state of inflammation and what is the consequence of inflammation in the body arthritis aches and pains joint pain and you have a, a multitude rash skin rash there's many many elements that are connected to uh to to stress to over young to be too much young so we can take the fire and the water to say this is yin and this is yang so if you're too much young <clears throat> you're not balancing the yin so if you're too uh too excited to you you live a very a very uh young state you have to also nourish the yin what does that mean yeah you have to do meditation so what is a yin practice we talked about last time a meditation sleep really deeply now the problem with the sleep is that if you don't practice throughout the day a balance you won't sleep very good so if the day is not balanced between yin and yang like you went to bed and the whole day was yang 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 there you don't have any yin it's going to be very hard to replenish the yin energy so it's like you have two buckets yin and yang so if you don't put water in the pot so how do we do water in the pot so you see that throughout the day you have some activity that is yang and some activity that is yin and they, like if you go jog for an hour then you go have to go back home and do meditation for an hour so that's what it means that the yin and yang should be balanced 
Now, what's nice about Qigong practice, that it is balancing yin and yang, is the Qigong practice, what we do, and why I love to do it. And really, I do it because I love it. <laughs> That's why I do Qigong, because I, it, rebal it balances myself. And so what happens between Qigong is a, a, special, is a very nice practice between, so it's not yin, completely yin, because it's not the sitting meditation, and it's not jogging. It's somewhere in between. It's movement, meditative movement, yeah? So you have equal between yin and yang. So you, you teach your mind and body, hey, this is a state of balance. So a lot of people, they come to a Qigong class and they say, oh, this is too boring. It's too slow. I cannot do it. It's too slow. What is the what can you say about these people? They're too much young, right? They go, 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 go. All of a sudden you slow them down. They're not used to it, right? You're like, oh my God, this is like it's too slow. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's what they need. But they go, but it's yeah, so but so you have to understand. And if if Qigong makes you tired, some people starting and make me very tired because the relaxation response kicks in and then the body notice, oh, wow, I'm, I'm too much young. I don't have any. Yes. Yeah, so they get really tired after Qigong class. They get really tired. So basically they're wired and tired throughout the day. So when they do Qigong, they feeling uh, it brings to the surface that tiredness that they have underneath the surface. And some people practice Qigong and feel good energy. So these people are, their yin chi is replenished. That's that's really good. Uh, so so this it's so the practice of qigong is also a nice perimeter to see where are you. Like sometimes I do practice qigong and I'm like yawning all the time. So I'm I'm noticing, hey, you know, I I actually went too much. That's really good because it balances me. And sometimes I practice qigong and I feel wow, that gives me good energy. I. I can go for a run or I can go walk my dog now. It's, I feel good. So a lot of time we're not aware of where our energy is. Are we too young or too yin? Now too yin is not good also. Just like imagine yourself sitting on the sofa all day, right? You got a day off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest. Yeah, you sit on the sofa all day long. What are you going to be in the end of the day? Restful or tired? probably going to be tired <laughs> sitting on the sofa all day you're going to be tired why because too much yin too much yin it's also not balanced also meditate all day you're going to be tired you're not going to have energy so really we want to see uh the relationship now between water and fire so we have to have uh, enough water so what so the whole idea of chi is the steam that comes out of the water when you cook the the pot yeah, so that when there's steam, that's good. You have energy. When the water depletion, <laughs> that's not good. And usually our state is that the water is less. Yeah, and we take coffee. What coffee does? Kicks up the kidney, adrenal, right? Give you adrenaline. What's adrenaline? Is the kidney adrenal. Comes from the word adrenals and it sits on the kidney. So adrenaline, <laughs> yeah, you can do it uh, with the coffee, with all kinds of stimulants. So basically, you are taking more water from the kidney. You're saying, "Hey, I'm tired, but I need a more energy." But then you don't give it back to the kidney, right? You never go. <laughs> so you're on overdraft all the time. Yeah. So it's that's that's a very important uh, important topic to talk about. Like, am I too much yin today? Am I too much yang? And what can I do? What can I do? Look at yourself from above. What can I do now? Yeah, I, I've worked out. Now, what can I do to, to nourish myself? You can do the breathing practice for a few minutes. You can rest. You can read a book. A yin activity doesn't have to be seated meditation. It could be walking slowly in the forest and absorbing the chi from the forest. I'm saying slowly because a lot of people do like a fast walk and they think about political stuff <laughs> when they walk. That's not yin. So when you want to yin, what is yin is listening. So we did it in the meditation when we started, we listened. So looking, absorbing things, right? Yin is inhaling. When you inhale a lot, that's yin, absorbing chi. Exhale is yang. 
yeah so when we have balance between inhale and exhale we feeling balance and the breath really reflects that even though we're not aware but if you're too much young you're going to exhale longer or more forceful than inhale on a very subtle level you wouldn't notice it but when you are a complete um even between inhalation and exhalation you're in a state of balance so um, another uh, uh, way to nourish your um, yin chi is reading books. Yeah, reading is very good. Uh, contemplating, uh, walking in nature, swimming can be either yin or yang. Depends if it's competitive swimming or immersive yourself in water. What you do with your mind is really important. So... So this is what I wanted to kind of invite you to, to kind of notice about yourself, like yin or yang, and where do I, what, what do I need? Now, a lot of us don't have, usually you're too much young. A lot of us don't know it. <laughs> I work with a lot of people and I told them, are you stressed? Like, tell me, what, how's your day like? And they're like, no, I'm not stressed. I'm fine. I'm, I'm da, 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 da. And they tell me all this stuff. And I think maybe they're a little stressed. And I give them some techniques, some things that they do daily, and they feel much, much better. <laughs> to a point that some people heal fully from some pain that they have for a long time. Amazing. That's why I'm saying we're not aware of it. So incorporate Qigong, incorporate meditation, incorporate relaxation is very important, especially in the summer. Yeah, and we have a lot of people that are very uh, fire people, like the people that like to do all these things all the time. Yeah, I see these people that like to bungee jump and uh, adventure and hike all the time, active, active, active. So these people are, it's very good, but if they don't do yin practices, they're going to slowly burn off their, their chi over, over the years. Yeah, they're going to develop yeah, the second, the second uh, stage of kidney depletion, and it could be later in life, is all these things that we talked about, inflammation-related stuff. So that's what I have to say. <laughs> I'm going to switch it to you for either question or just, um, or just sharing from your perspective. Uh, and this is, again one topic we're going to talk about very interesting topics next next time we're going to talk about very very interesting topic in terms of energy today is about yin and yang fire and water and living in a state of balance and what we need to do it we need mindfulness right we need to kind of look at ourselves and where we are and i'm like okay i'm i've ran around all day or i'm very busy in my mind you can actually just sit and think too much and be worried all the time and that's still young so you don't have to be running. <laughs> you can sit and be very young by emotional tension. So that's very tricky. All right. Anybody wants to say something or just uh, ask a question uh, between yin and yang? Because it, it, be, it could be a little uh, tricky, like, like the, the last one I, I talked about. Anyone wants to just unmute yourself if you want to say something or contribute. Catherine, are you un, did you unmute yourself? <laughs> Do you oh, want to, yes. Uh huh. What 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 do you think about this? <laughs> um. Well, I think it's great, and uh, sometimes I actually think I'm too yin. Also. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. It can be a weird combination of it, actually. <laughs> yeah. What do you What do you mean, the combination? Well, sometimes I I try to slow myself down so much because if I feel um, anxious, but then that doesn't quite get it either. I'm not flowing, so mm -hmm. I need to make it uh, make the energy move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not necessarily in a super aggressive way, but uh, help the tension move out or help the worry move out. And what do you, what, what tools do you, what do you use to do that? Well, uh, some Qigong perhaps. 
Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's some of the things you suggested, like, you know, walk in a cool place or mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Humor. Wow. You're touching on an interesting subject that I was planning to talk about, too. Yeah. Good. Great. I mean, exactly. And so like emotional, emotional agitation is also young, even though we're sitting and doing, just mm -hmm. thinking I'm yin, but I'm actually young, you know, internally. And right. there, to get, just to get that stuckness out. Yes. Yes. And, and one of the really easiest way is also breathing technique, breathing technique, calm and long breaths would be really, really, uh, uh, Again, especially anxiety or depression, this combination, like a long, a long, soft, lower abdominal breathing would be very good for a uh, few minutes of those would be really good. But um, yeah, so yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else wants to kind of chime in here or ask or contribute? Yes. Hey, Bart, good, good to see you. Um, so are all the exercises that we do now with your nine week program in your plus plan, mm -hmm. they're for the heart. So they're for either too much fire in the heart or too little fire in the heart. Is that right? right? Yes. Okay. And uh, what is, when we just walk on the earth, when we just walk in, in a forest or on a beach, is that yin or is that yang? Uh, yeah, so that's that's a great question, and you know it depends. Uh, it depends. <laughs> you can make it both, or you can make it. It could be like, you know. So I remember one time I, when I walk in nature, I really want to absorb the chi from the trees because <laughs> the trees are very generous with their energy. By the way. And so when you walk in nature, you want to absorb the energy and you want to look and smell and feel. And that's very yin. And we always yin deplete, depleted. So it depends how. And I remember one time I walked in, in nature like around Phoenix Lake. Some of you that live in Marine County, you know that lake. And I walked, it's a very beautiful lake. Now everybody's biking there with mountain bikes, so I don't go there anymore. <laughs> but it used to be very quiet and beautiful. And it's still beautiful. It's just no, it's just more crowded. So uh, COVID, everybody went and biked there. Now they all found it. <laughs> so now when I when I walk around Phoenix Lake, and all of a sudden these two women, whoosh, and they're they're kind of in their fifties, and they just passed me really quickly, and they were talking about politics, and they were do like a very fast walk. Yeah, so maybe they want to lose weight, but they talk politics, and they really didn't. So that, that their walk was very young. It was, and actually the thinking about the politics, about the president at that time, and they're very upset. And so <laughs> I don't think they absorb, I don't think that was very yin or nourishing on their part. They could be on a treadmill in the gym and, you know, it, it doesn't matter. The environment really didn't matter to them. Uh, uh, so th that's very young and actually induced by the stress of the thinking. Uh, so, so I guess you can make both like a walk on the beach could be, sounds really great <laughs> if you do it right, but it's, it could be also like walking fast and thinking about different things and, and making it uh not, not, not nourishing, you know, and uh, a walk is very, is very active. So uh, I would invite everybody to, to do whatever they do in their life, like they do Qigong. So we move, but we are relaxed, we're meditative, we absorb them, but we also get exercise. So something between yin and yang. So when the yin and yang is together, you're, you're really in a state of balance. So uh, any physical activity is, uh, is, has the potential to actually unify yin and yang, which is the best. Because you're not sitting meditating, you're not completely uh, yin, you are moving. And that's, that's a, a nice way. So think about how, how you walk with your chi. 
how do you walk with the chi of the universe? How do you connect with the chi of the universe? How do you still active, but you're also relaxed at the same time? And that's the, if you can incorporate uh, into more things, that's the best uh, into activities. Yes. Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, of course. Of course. I love your question, Bart. <laughs> so glad you came. There is one exercise when we lift up the earth energy and we have the very light energy beneath our arms and then we bring it to the body and then we bring it down. Uh -huh. So in the past, I thought that the moon was yin and the earth was yang, but the, the earth can also give yin energy. Yeah, yin energy. Yeah, so the earth would be a yin energy. Uh, so the earth is yin and you bring it to the heart, which is fire. Mm -hmm. So you cool down the heart. So when you bring the earth up to the heart, it cools down the heart. So, and then you go down and you release the stress from the heart down. So the earth would be yin in that way. So when you lift the palms up, you're thinking about cooling energy coming to the heart, coming to the fire, cooling down the fire, and then exhale down. So that would be, that would be uh, more of a, yeah, the fire in the heart and the yin is the earth. The moon is also connect with the yin energy. The moon connect with the, uh, connecting with the kidney and connect with the center of the brain. The brightness of the moon reflects in Taoism and the brightness of your, of your shen, of your, of your spirit, the center of the brain. We say the light in the eye, somebody's eyes is the light inside of the center of the brain the brightness of the moon reflect that. So uh, there's a whole meditation, Taoist meditation around beautiful. So yeah, the moon is also yin energy. Yeah, okay, thank you. I just want to say that now I am also practicing already with 11 people in the park. Like three times a week. Yes. We're not coming three times a week, but in total we, are, uh, we have 11. I have 11 people, so... Really amazing. And I'm doing really amazing. all the exercises that I learned from you. Oh, thank you. Oh, great. Oh, that's so awesome. Mm. And that brings us to the to the topic of next next week too. Uh, purpose, life purpose, you know, and like what you do and how that gives you energy. Uh, that's very, very important. And I'll share with you some stories about that next week. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Want to keep it kind of... Uh, short to half an hour so people uh, can come and stay so let's uh, put our hands on the heart and close with a heart meditation since we talked about it and so we close our eyes and we connect with the heart energy connect with the fire in the heart so again the fire if the balanced heart would not be excitement would actually be Happy and calm. So calmness is, uh, so you want the fire <laughs> on the stove to be kind of simmery, very low flame, like calm and happy. The happiness is the fire and the calm is <laughs> a cool, uh, relaxed fire. And that's a really good way to not be overstimulated. And that's a, a balanced heart. So the way to do it energetically is to smile to the heart. To so imagine the heart is a person inside of you, is a child, and you're smiling to th this baby inside of you. And you appreciate it. So that's very nice for the heart. And let's move the hands to the kit, to the lower abdomen, to the belly button, to the navel. And move the breath into the navel. So as we inhale, the space between the navel and the spine become longer. And when we exhale, the space between the navel and the spine become shorter. 
So that breath nourishes the yin kidney of the, the kidney chi, the water, filling up the water. <laughs> So put your attention right there below, behind the navel, inside of you. And see the breath going there. And feel this is very calming. And this is the water element. That's deep water. That's deep relaxation and power. The kidney is the source of all healing. So if we want to heal from any ailment, we said that the kidney is the root of all the organs. If the kidney is not full, it's very hard to heal. So that's very important to, to do these yin practices and including this breath. This type of breathing would tonify the kidney meaning amplifying the energy. Notice how calming it is. And you really focused. A little different than breathing to the heart center, a little more calm, a little more grounded. Nice, let's open the hands, open the eyes. Ah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So my to-go to breathing it would be here, not to here, right down here. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for sharing. And next week, we're going to work on another, another chi topic. So thank you, everybody, for joining me. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you, Esther and Teresa. Thank you for coming. All right, see you next week.